Ready to take your 3D printing game to the next level? Say hello to the Vision Miner 22 IDEX V3. A dual extrusion beast built for high performance prototyping and serious production work. Whether you're printing with carbon fiber nylon, peak, or anything in between, this machine is engineered to deliver speed, strength, and precision at a price much lower than its competition. Today I'm going to unbox it, get it set up, and do some test prints on it. Now there's not a whole lot to the unboxing, this thing is pretty much ready to go out of the box, but with the versatility of materials this printer can print, I did a lot of different tests on it, so that part is going to be a little bit longer than normal. So this machine has some pretty impressive specs. It can get up to 500 degrees Celsius at the nozzle, the build plate can get to 200 degrees Celsius, and the build chamber can get to 100 degrees Celsius. So let's get to the unboxing. So it looks like there's a second box on top of the first. I'm not sure what's in this. Could be some accessories or something like that. So let's bring this over here and take a look. Got some heat resistant gloves because apparently this printer gets very hot. So you have to wear these when you're working on the printer while it's on. This kind of looks like just some branded Vision Miner work mat or mouse pad or something like that. We have some nano polymer adhesive, which you need to put this on the bed of the printer before you print certain materials like Peak and Peck and Altum. This keeps it from sticking too hard to the bed and lets it release very easily. Got a couple pair of cutters. These ones look pretty nice. A scraper, of course. Looks like another sort of scraper, a razor blade scraper. We have a big long power cable bunch of screwdrivers, looks like some extra fans, USB stick, USB cord. Here we have some, I think these are more nozzles. <clears throat> yep. There's another one here, 0.4 millimeter nozzles, wire brush. Take a look at what's in here. some sort of grease. I'm not totally sure yet. That might just be grease for lubricating parts. And under this, I believe this is the build plate. I'm going to pull that out in just one second. Okay, so it looks like we have the build plate here. I think there's actually two pieces here and it's just glass. I believe there's a different type of build plate inside as well, one that's made of carbon fiber. Now that I got that out of the way, I'm just going to finish taking off this plastic wrap on the box and then we'll actually get the box open. Okay, let's open it up and see what's inside. Got a maintenance schedule here. It looks like the whole side of the box just comes right off. I think all sides will. That'll help us take this printer out because it is big. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the unboxing part. Now we're gonna have to move this printer. Now this printer is big. The printer itself weighs 200 pounds. It has a really big build volume. So we're gonna need multiple people to help carry this onto the desk. So we'll just kind of jump to that part. All right, without too much difficulty, we got the printer up here. It is pretty much ready to go. One more thing before I do some test prints is removing the satisfying protective layers. Okay, and as for the test prints, normally I start off with a Benchy. I did do a Benchy, I got to that one a little bit later because I printed it out of Altum. So before I got to that material, I started off with some PLA. And this machine does have two extruders, so I wanted to really test those out. And I started off with just a little multicolor print here. So with other multicolor systems like the AMS on the Bamboo Lab, it's using one extruder and switching out between filaments every time. Something like this, having two, you can switch between them very quickly. And now I know you're probably not buying this machine to do multicolor prints just to make little fidget toys like this, but I thought it would be a good demonstration regardless. And it turned out really nice. It did a really good job switching between those colors. Obviously there's no color bleed between those two extruders. 
and the quality is really good. And it also printed quite a bit faster than an AMS or a CFS would. So what you're more likely gonna be doing is maybe using a different type of material for support versus the main model. So you might be using hips as a support for ABS, and that's where this thing really shines. One of the main selling points of this printer is that it is an IDEX printer, meaning independent dual extruders. And a cool thing you can do with that is print two things at the same time. Now you can't completely print different models at the same time. You have to do it in either a duplicate mode or a mirror mode. So that's what I did here using ABS and ASA at the same time. And it would usually recommend you use the same material when you're doing duplicate mode or mirror mode. ASA and ABS are close enough, you can print them at the same time. And these prints turned out really good. That really stable build chamber temperature does a good job at preventing any warping. And this is honestly one of the most common things people are gonna be printing with this printer. I went down to Rapid TCT this year and went to the Vision Miner booth and I got a chance to speak with Rob and he said, this is the main thing most people are printing with and this really is a workhorse for printing ABS and ASA. And I can see why, these prints turned out exceptionally well. I printed ABS and ASA on some of my cheaper machines and the, a lot of them suffer from warping, lifting off the bed a bit. This one turned out perfect and printing two at the same time just looks so cool. So it was a great printer for printing that material. And then I have another ABS part here. So the, the last ones were more a functional part. This one, I just kind of wanted to see aesthetically how that ABS prints. And I also wanted one with some supports. Now the supports came off very easily and worked very well. Again, there was no warping on this print thanks to that stable build chamber temperature. And it turned out really nicely as well. Next up, we have Altum 9085. And this is where we get to the point where you can't really use your consumer printers anymore. You really do need an industrial machine proven by the fact that I tried printing this on my Bamboo Lab H2D as well in it. It almost worked. Uh, it started printing, but it just wasn't getting that layer adhesion like I was getting on the Vision Miner. I think the limiting factor was the build chamber temperature. So let's take a look at the one printed on the Vision Miner. It turned out really well. It's very strong. I do not think I could break this by hand. And it really highlights the capabilities of this printer. But I think this is a perfect example of when you need to upgrade to an engineering machine. And then finally, I printed one of the hardest things to print. And one thing you should absolutely not print on anything but an industrial machine, that is peak. Now this prints with a nozzle temp of around 450 degrees Celsius. So you're not gonna be trying this on your Bamboo Lab printer. And here's what I printed. This is a backpack hook. Definitely overkill, you don't need Peak for this, but it was mainly just to test out this machine. The biggest challenge with printing Peak is getting it hot enough and keeping it hot enough. And this printer is more than capable of doing that. And as you might know, Peak is very expensive, so you're gonna want a reliable printer to print this. This, it works out to around a dollar a gram. So this being 30 grams is about $30. Don't tell my boss, this is probably the most expensive backpack hanger you'll ever see. So you definitely don't want any failed prints when it comes to peak. Now I wanna talk about a few features or lack of features, if you wanna put it that way. One notable thing this printer's missing is a screen. And at first I had a bit of concerns about that. I was like, of course I want a screen. But as I started using it, I really didn't miss it at all. So you can connect it to your computer over a local area network, either through Wi-Fi or an ethernet cable. You don't need to go online for this printer, which is a selling point. None, none of your data is being shared to you know, foreign countries that you don't know where it's rooted through. This is just at your own network. So that's a plus. And then I was thinking about my normal use. When I'm using a printer these days, I don't really go up to the printer that much anymore. I do almost everything over my computer and send it off to the printer. So not having a screen, I really don't miss it at all. And one of the things Rob mentioned is, you know, if you really want a screen, just get a, a small cheap tablet, you can connect it to that and just stick that to the side of your printer and you're good to go. If that's holding you back at all, don't let it, you really don't need one. And if you're gonna be printing ABS, you're probably gonna want some filtration. Now this filter has ports on the back and it comes with the files to 3D print in order to hook up to your filtration system. We have a BOFA system right here and we found the files on their website. You print these, hook them up into the back and just connect your filter on just like that. And another feature I noticed is just how well insulated this machine is. There's a lot of thick padding all throughout the machine and it keeps it really stable over a long period of time. And even after you shut it off, you gotta be careful because it stays hot for a long time. The print was done for a good half an hour. I opened up the machine, 
and touch something that I shouldn't have and it was still extremely hot. So yeah, be careful. But yeah, it's a good feature. It keeps this machine nice and stable. And the top opens for easy access to all your parts here. You can easily access both extruders. One thing I've noticed in the industry over the last, you know, five to 10 years is that consumer level printers are getting so good so fast that some people are starting to wonder, do we really need industrial machines? These industrial machines have been improving as well, of course, but there's kind of been this exponential growth with things like the Bamboo Lab H2D and those kinds of printers, where you're able to print things that you never could before. You know, back when I started 3D printing on my little consumer printer, PETG was pushing it. That was like the hottest thing I could print. Now you're, you know, you have 350 degree nozzles on your, on your consumer printers. So you're wondering where these printers belong these days. And that's why I think this Vision Miner printer fits in this nice little middle ground where there used to be no printers there before. You know, you're usually spending $100,000 on these industrial machines, but Vision Miner comes in at a lot cheaper and it allows you to print those things that your consumer, even your best consumer printers cannot print. That's why I think Vision Miner really carved out their own niche in this industry and why I really am excited about this printer. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.